All right, here we go. The This Week in Golf podcast. Going over a British Open preview. Rory just won the Scottish Open. We'll talk about some of these. I'm calling them sub-PGA events. They're the lower PGA events. And I think that's it. Maybe we'll talk about the American Century Celebrity Tournament. Anyway, let's talk about Rory. He just won the Scottish Open. A fantastic performance and tournament. Rory has been playing good all year. And let's give him some props, especially in the realm of, you know, not listening to all the outside, or, or I should say winning in the face of all the outside noise. He's kind of been this, you know, main lead figure on the PGA side in regards to the PGA versus the live and all that's happened in the last year. And he's always kind of up there in the in the front, the front man. And in fact, this week, right before the tournament, he said, he'd never play for Liv. I'll never play for Liv. That was a total cover in your ass situation, by the way, because it was revealed in the documents the week before that he had met with uh, Yasser. I don't know his last name, the head of Liv. Anyways, so they had met and they'd had some discussions early on. Roy was never going to join, but nonetheless, he said he'd never play for Liv. And so that's cool for him. But anyways, let's talk about that win because it was pretty darn impressive. Um, this kid from Scotland, hometown guy, Robert McIntyre, ends up shooting 64 on the final day, finishes about I think four or five holes before Rory post a 14 under. Did I say he shot 64 on the final round? Really impressive. And not only that, but dude gets up on 18 and it just hits a horrible drive. He's he's like 50 yards. He misses the fairway by like 50 yards. But luckily for him, he ends up on kind of where the patrons had been walking along there. And so the, the fescue was mashed down a bit. And then the guy hits just this incredible, I think it was a five wood, and he hits it to like three feet away. He sinks the putt. He ends up 14 under. He's got, I think, either a one or a two stroke lead at that point over Rory, who's coming home. And Rory hits a chip on 16 to about, I don't know, about four or five feet away, but he doesn't make the putt. And so now he has to birdie one of the last two holes to force a playoff. So he gets up on 17. He hits it to about five feet away. He sinks that putt. A great swing on that one as well. Um, both, it was like a total knockdown shot. I don't know what he played. It was probably like a four iron. But he keeps it really super low into the wind. Hits it to five feet away. Makes that putt. So that ties it up. And then on 18, he drives it right down the middle. And he's got a two iron in the bag. Yeah, you got to have a two iron for, for all this wind. It was really windy out there, by the way if I didn't mention that before, and he hits that two iron to about five feet away again, and he ends up sinking the putt, wins the title, and I think, is that his first win of the year? I don't know. I'll have to check that out. But anyhow, congrats to Rory. He really brought it home. And let's just talk about Rory a little bit more and his swing and, and what he's been doing. And a lot of people don't know, but if you look up tour driving distance, the longest hitter on the PGA Tour, and I think he's like he's he's seven yards ahead of the next person, so he's in first place, is Rory McIlroy. Rory is about 5'10". He's probably 160, 170 pounds. He's listed at 160, but I don't know. Maybe he's been doing some squats, some bench, some power cleans. Anyways, he's driving the ball a long way, and... You know, let's let's put this into perspective. He's number one, 327 yards. The last ranked person on the list, for whatever reasons, the 190th player, uh, averages 277 yards average. So the 200, 200th person, essentially, averages about 275 yards off the tee. That's like the top of mind right now. Hey, man, I'm getting old. What can I say? I can still hit it long, but not as long as I used to. So that's impressive. The other thing about Rory and his swing, um, Tiger 
told his son, Charlie, to mimic Rory's swing. He says the best swing on tour. And it's interesting because if you watch Tiger's son, Charlie, play, it looks exactly like Rory's swing, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So congrats to him. Um, as going into this week, it is the Open Championship. It's going to be played at Royal Liverpool. Some of the people that have won there in the past, Bobby Jones, Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy. Some of the bigger names. Oh, Walter Hagen, if we're going to go way back in the day. And a few other people who I'm sure are wonderful golfers, but I didn't recognize their names. But yeah, the Open is there this weekend. And looking forward to a good one. Cam Smith is the defending champ. He's getting no respect. He's getting no love. He's not even in a featured group because he's on live. So even though there's still a deal in the works, an agreement to make an agreement, uh, Cam is getting no love. I did listen to a video from the, um, the head of the RNA, and I don't have his name offhand. Should have wrote it down, but it didn't. Anyways, he was talking about um, the purses, and they asked him if he would if they would ever take on a sponsor. And he was like, "Heck yeah, we'll take on a sponsor if we can make you know the purse bigger." They would need to take on a sponsor, and they said the Saudis, and they were like, "Yeah, whatever, we'll we'll do it." So, food for thought. But anyways, yeah, coming into the tournament this weekend for the Open Championship. I don't think Rory can do it two weeks in a row, but everybody seems to like him in this mix. Cam Smith, I would give him a shot. Brooks has a shot, Kepka, And uh, I would say the guy I would pick as a dark horse, just, you know, right out of the gate, is Hovland. I like Hovland's game. I think Hovland could win this thing. So I'm just excited for a couple of reasons. One, it's the Open Championship. And then secondly, the thing I love about it the most is it's, you know, I live in California and it's over by, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 in the morning. So I have the rest of my day to go do stuff. Whereas like the U.S. Open went until dark on Saturday night and almost dark on Sunday. They don't even start till like three o'clock in the afternoon. That's like prime sunset time in San Diego. Don't they know? Work with me, folks. <laughs> Yeah, so anyways, we'll see who wins that and excited for just a great tournament, another major championship. Hopefully, um, hopefully someone from Liv wins it. I just like that. I just like disruption. It's not that I like Liv more than I like the PGA or whatever. I don't, I don't choose a side in anything. But what I really like is disruption and change. And so I like to see you know, what they're doing, how they're affecting the game, and how it plays out. It makes for good drama. So much drama in the world. Okay, let's talk about sub-PGA events. I don't know why I'm calling them sub-PGA events. B-team, B-events. Um, last week there was one, right? So a lot of people went to the Scottish Open. They either took the week off, played at the Scottish Open to warm up, or they didn't make it. And so they're in, they were in the Barbasol Championship. And the Barbasol Championship was won in a playoff by Vincent Norman, and he beat Nathan Kimsey. I don't know either of these players. I do a weekly podcast on golf. <laughs> you know, so they, it just goes to show you there are a lot of guys out there that play. And both, both uh, Norman and Kimsey, they probably play all the time, week to week. They're probably making cuts and making a good good amount of money as well, but nobody knows who they're. You know, they're ranked somewhere probably in the hundreds and they get but they do get a chance. And that's the nice thing about these these things like the Barbersall Championship. And then again this weekend there's one it's actually in Lake Tahoe. It's called the Barracuda the Barracuda Championship. So again, a lot of guys on there that are, I don't think struggling is the right term. I think that, you know, they're, you got to give these guys credit. They're out there. They're essentially private contractors. They're, you know, trying to be a pro golfer, trying to compete. And these events give these guys a chance to not only, you know, 
rank up, but make some money. And potentially like for a guy like Vincent Norman, now he won a PGA event on the year. So he gets to play. Um, I think he gets a year exemption. He gets all the, all the um, perks that go along with that. He probably gets to play in the majors next year. So these things are cool. Not a lot of people follow them. You don't see a lot of highlights on them, but these guys are out there grinding. Grinding would be a good word. Grinding and trying to make a life for themselves and on the PGA Tour for a long period of time, and they're doing it. Now, right along those same lines, last week at that Barber's All Championship, Lucas Glover was, he scored fifth overall. Same kind of guy. Won the U.S. Open like, I don't know, 12 years ago. Still bounces around. He's probably at every tour stop, you know, playing 30, 40 events a year and making a way on the PGA Tour. People know the name because he won the U.S. Open, but he probably wins every couple of years. He wins a tournament, maybe like the Barracuda Championship or something like that. But a guy who's just literally grinding out there every week, making a career playing golf. And he's probably close to, he's probably in his mid-40s now. So he's going to ride this ship and keep printing money as long as he can. So good for him. Okay, final topic. I will cover it. I have mild interest in the subject is the American Century Championship, which is the celebrity golf tour, basically. Uh, most of which are former athletes, basketball. Some, Well, I guess current as well. Current and former athletes. There's some actors and various people in there, comedians and whatnot. But it is something that really brings the fans out. Steph Curry of the Golden State Warriors won it. Very impressive, by the way. I think he shot 72, 73, and then 69 on the final day. Eagles, the final hole to win the tournament. So in addition to like guys out there that can probably barely break 100, you got a guy like Curry and a few others that are really good players. And... You know, they actually have like team events, celebrity team events. Um, There's all kinds of stuff. I guess it gets the fans out there. It's good for golf. It gets a lot of new eyeballs on the sports, new fans, maybe just fans of like basketball in the NBA that want to go see Steph, Steph, Steph Curry play golf. And maybe they'll start playing golf. Final thought on it. I'm going to leave it with the Curry family. Big shout out to Del Curry, the father of Steph and Steph Curry. And the shout out is is your names, dude. <laughs> like, who named these kids? You have two boys. They both play in the NBA, so they're very successful. But one is Steph and one is Seth. That must have made for some confusion around the house. Don't know why you do it to yourself as a parent, but kudos to them. They're both in the NBA, and they're both wonderful. That's this week in golf. I'll talk to you all next week. Hey, it's Jeremy Callahan, and thanks for listening to This Week in Golf. Make sure and hit subscribe so you can get all the latest news and analysis from Golf VPN.